All right, well, so like we talked about in the last video, we, I, need to construct some type of prototype jaw mount that is going to show us kind of how everything's going to go together. And my initial kind of Mark 1 Mod 0 idea follows this template design where we have a lower jaw assembly and an upper jaw assembly and that those two assemblies will be connected together with some sort of hinge and drive mechanism eventually with the upper jaw assembly having a plate that will allow it to uh, connect down the neck to the, the rest of Rex. This upper jaw assembly will be fixed to the upper jaw skull of Rex. This lower jaw assembly will be affixed to Rex's lower jaw. Together they will operate, so on and so forth. However, what we need to do is get this kind of poster board template laid out onto some easy to work with aluminum. Okay, this is about three quarters of a millimeter. I don't speak thousandths of an inch, so uh, that's about three quarters of a millimeter according to the calipers. So what we're going to do is go back to our original template here and based upon some, some looking around, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of tweaking, a little revising, get a really crisp pattern on here. We're going to cut that out with a razor knife and a straight edge to have a really, really super crisp option. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use some spray adhesive, attach the templates right to our aluminum. We're going to hit it with a little bit of layout fluid. We're going to use a scribe and scribe in the layout fluid. And then we're going to go ahead and peel the, peel the paper template away and, and go ahead and make our cuts. Okay. So I want to use the whole of the, the paper so that I can make really good crisp marks and then cut it out. So I'm going to just make some dots. I'm going to erase this dot so I don't think I can use it. And now all I'm doing with this process is giving myself a place to line up to. Okay, and play connect the dots. I told you guys I was going to make mistakes. You didn't believe me though, did you? But no, there's no way he's going to show his mistakes on YouTube. Everybody on YouTube likes to turn out the perfect little image. Well, I suppose there are a lot of folks that do like to show a more idealized version of themselves in their social media presence. However, I think there is some real difficulty with that. And that is we end up living in what Jacques Lacan refers to as the imaginary. And Lacan's philosophy uh, of psychoanalysis, there are three distinct domains. The real, the domain of that which is real, and in some ways cannot be described because it is real, it can only be experienced. There is the imaginary, which is our aggressive over response to the real in which we try to create an imaginary domain for us to attain a sort of happiness in. And then there is the symbolic, which is the domain of language, of semiotic systems. So. We're going to avoid the imaginary and we're going to live as much as we can in these videos in the symbolic and in the real. And the real in this case involves a whole bunch of eraser marks and my need to make a few corrections to my template so that I wind up with as nice of a cutout as possible. I think that gets our template 
pretty well established. And now, someplace in the mess, there is a knife that is reasonably sharp. I could, of course, go into the house and go get an X-Acto knife and do this, but what would the fun in that be? Because again, if I mess it up, you guys just get to see more errors. Lucky, lucky you. That's, of course, assuming this makes the light of day. Just kidding. If I record it, it's going up. I don't have the time or energy to do more. Well, I got the time. <laughs> I'm making a robot dinosaur in my garage. I obviously have the time to go back and do it over again if I felt like it, but it seems like it would be cheating. Well, now I'm just going to do some cuts and then we'll, we'll edit out the boring parts because this is going to actually take about 20 minutes itself. We're getting close on our template. Okay. We now have upper and lower jaws ready to in place and cut out. Before you go putting stuff onto your metal, brake cleaner takes all the grime and minerals off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera here because I don't wanna spray brake cleaner on my, my fancy workbench. Okay, so the side of our aluminum that we're gonna be working on has been wiped down see come away with some grit and grime grab some of the ever famous super 77 spray adhesive which I think works really well as a nice all-purpose adhesive there's other stuff out there of course 3m is not the end-all be-all of products but they do a nice job so Tack that down, tack that down, now truth be told, I have not worked with layout fluid before for this purpose, so this is a idea that I saw on Adam Savage's Tested in one of his builds, and I'm trying it out. So, layout fluid is what machinists use to make precise markings and scribes, and we're going to give this a try. So this is a little bit of experimentation and learning on my part. Okay, there is some layout fluid. Get the air to move past it some so that hopefully it'll dry. I got a sneaky suspicion I could actually just peel up and achieve the same result, but I don't know. So we're gonna try one with a scribe line and we'll try the other one without. And I, before I do something stupid, I'm gonna grab a pair of latex gloves. Okay, let's see what we come up with. Hopefully we don't come up with layout fluid on our hands. Well, I am going to say that peeling the template off is going to be the most effective way of handling this. We'll see how that works. It's pretty precise there. Those corners are pretty precise. I think they certainly give us a solid idea of where to cut as we move along here. So, since I didn't read the directions on this before, I'm going to look at them now. 
Fast drying, they say. Well, not fast enough. We're going to let that sit until my fingertip doesn't bring it away. And uh, then we'll see about cutting it out. Take it from there. All right, they're right. That was about all of five minutes of uh, off-camera time to let that fluid dry. And uh, we're going to go ahead and cut these out and see where we go from there. Um, what I have to work with is a pair of tin snips. So that's what we're going to do. I could put this into a vise and cut each one of these lines with a hacksaw. I could do that. Um, I do have metal cutting blades for my jigsaw. I could do that. However, I think that both the hacksaw blade option and the jigsaw blade option are going to give me a whole lot more uh, wiggle and problem in the material. And I think that for the most part with the dimensions that I'm cutting here, that I can work with the tin snips and get it done. I'm gonna try and keep most of this on screen if I can. Now, in some cases, I'm gonna cut right up to this line. In some cases, I'm cutting just off of it. I'll be honest with you, there is no real rhyme or reason for that at this stage of the game. This is absolutely a an early stage template as far as I'm concerned. I thought about actually doing an initial next step in balsa wood, uh, in doing it in a little bit of wooden material with some wooden parts and pieces because of the easiness and precision that I would have in cutting that with the tools that I have in my shop. However, the I had the metal, I had the sheet metal laying around from another project, and to really be able to move forward in the prototyping phase here, and that's what I consider this as sort of, we're in the design and uh, tinkering design. So for example, with the moving straight to a metal template here, you know, straight to getting this done and, and eventually getting this bent on the brake, that you'll be able to see, then I will get a sense also as I move forward with it of what the best way of attaching motors and, motors and servos, brackets, the supporting kind of infrastructure is going to be. Uh, I'm going to clean up some of these lines here. I can eventually clean some of these up with, again, a file, a piece of sandpaper, whatever I choose to get that right. I'm going to go ahead and off camera make that other cut piece and then we'll go forward from there. All right, so as we can see, I got both pieces pretty well cut out. I got a little trimming to do here. So I'm going to just give myself a pencil line to follow here when I line up the break. That's going to give me my bends. Same thing here. I'm just going to give myself a pencil line. The nice thing about the spray adhesive that we use to put the paper template down with is that it, it kind of helps show that a little bit better. Um, I, I certainly could be doing this with a lot more precision. Each of these cuts could have been made along a... Uh, all the markings could have been reinforced with scribe lines along with a, a machinist square. But again, I'm in, the, I'm in the prototyping template phase of this where I'm okay with a little bit of slop and a little bit of imperfection in the interests of getting my template made, getting my prototype in hand. For those of you who are Tim Ferriss fans or Mark Andreessen fans, this is very much that idea of fail quickly so that you can move forward when things aren't working. And I've now put four lines on there, but I recognize that the big, heavy, thick one is the one that I need to follow. So you say you don't have a sheet metal brake. There's a couple of ways that you can solve this problem if you're going to try and do some bending. The first is just a kind of a, a tin knocker, a heating and air conditioning installer style pliers. And option number two
this piece of cut off angle iron. Uh, if you've got a piece of angle iron floating around from another project, that can make a pretty effective break. You're just going to use that up against your, your line, get it nice and set. You're going to bend it up. Again, with this kind of thickness of material, it's not too hard to do by hand. Or, using the tin knocking player, get that back in frame, sorry. You can do the same thing. And then, if I need to refine my angle, I can, or whatever, again. So as it sits right now, this is the front of the lower jaw, this is the rear of the lower jaw, this cut here that I apparently did not mark out on the other side. See? Told you I'd show you my mistakes. You see that? Yeah. Anyway. So, we're going to go ahead and, once again, the two different options. We can use the metal brake out of a piece of angle iron. So, a piece of angle iron works really well. You could garbage pick it if you needed to. Now, the other thing that we got to remember is what direction our tabs bend when we're doing this. Because our upper jaw tabs need to bend down. Because, if you remember from our paper template, our bracket is at the top so that it can form the back end of Rex's skull. So, now, that's looking pretty good. Lower jaw. And what I need, I want the lower jaw to fit just in outside the upper jaw. I want the upper jaw to be on the inside of the lower jaw. So I want the bracket of the lower jaw to come up on the outside. What this is going to do then is when this arches, when this opens, when it articulates, there's going to be a space back here for this rear plate to hide out of the way. But also, more importantly, I'm going to have to attach some kind of a servo some kind of a motor here to get this to move. Now I'm already looking at this and thinking that I don't know what kind of a motor I'm going to get in to fit in that space. I don't know why I was thinking that was going to work. So what may have to happen is I may have to do something on this back plate here that lifts it. Um, I don't know. That's the joy of the templating process is that I get to, to mess around and figure that out. I think my next steps with this are going to be to drill some through holes and to start thinking about also what the bracket assembly that comes off the back of this is going to look like. So that's probably plenty for today in a real quick how do we transition from a paper template to a cardboard template to a real fast and dirty metal template to start seeing what our what our project's going to come together as and if nothing else I've made a really really fun chair. So thank you for your time and until next time, cheers.